Good morning all. I have another box of printed circuit boards from JLC PCB and I'm very excited to have a look at these because do you remember these things, these uh, 12 pin edge connectors or gold plated connectors? Well, the printed circuit boards in here, theoretically, if I've got this right, will mate with these connectors. Let's do the big reveal. And uh, oh, I've got a blue magnifying glass this time. Focused. Okay, here are my circuit boards. Oh, yes, look at that. Now, I'm planning to use this technique for little plug in filter boards for my vocoder project, but I wanted to sort of uh, do a test run. So what I've done with this is I've put uh, seven JST connectors on here, some three pin and some four pin, and I'm using it as a kind of power distribution uh, board. So on these connectors, what I've done is that I've actually paired these up on opposite pins. So you can see, well, let's get these out because we can't have a proper close look until I've got one out of the bag. Let's take a closer look at that. So what I wanted to show you was these six vias here, which simply link the connections to these six fingers um, directly through to the opposite uh, six fingers on the other side. So as I say, these have been uh, paired up for additional current because this is a power distribution board. I've got plus 12 volts, uh, ground, minus 12 volts, another ground, five volts, and another ground, I'm pretty sure that's how I've done it. Yeah, five volts is that one on its own there, which only goes to the four pin JSTs. Um, so yes, I decided to uh, put the opposite pins connected to each other. I've got three sets of grounds on here. It's not really necessary, but I wanted to use all the pins. So now for the interesting bit, do these two things mate up? Let's give it a try. So the first decision I had to make was how tight should I make this sticking out tab piece to the total uh, sort of slot in here. And I decided to go fairly loose because I wanted to see what the issues are with misalignment between these pads and these connectors in here. So we can have a look at that. That looks slightly asymmetric. Now I'm imagining that's the socket. I suppose it could be the PCB, but the whole point of doing this was to see whether this could slip far enough out of alignment that there could be issues with pads touching the connect the adjacent connector. So I think we're gonna to have to get in just a little bit closer on this. And I hope you can see that there's absolutely no risk of the pads getting anywhere near adjacent connector. And by the same token, there's no risk of the pad actually slipping away from the bifurcated, the double connector that it's uh, meant to be connected to. So I'm really happy. And I'm actually really pleased that I left that large margin so that I could just check that alignment issue. So yeah, I'm really happy with that. There's absolutely no danger um, of it connecting to the wrong pins. Now, of course, there is the possibility that you could put it in the wrong way around. And you can, I think there are little keyways in here, but I don't have the hardware for that. I could have had a, a routed uh, line running through there, but I chose not to. Right, let's go for an actual push fit. Now it's quite tight because this is a, standard 1.6 millimeter board and I did test this and it fits in here fine I tested it with uh, just another circuit board I can't remember which one something like that so let's push this in and that is a really nice very tight fit so I'm thinking that's going to make a really good connection even for power and there's nothing wrong with putting power through the gold fingers of a gold fingered edge connector. Uh, I've actually got a board from years ago, which I can show you. So this uh, printed circuit board from many years ago helped me make decisions 
about my board. Uh, one of those was actually where to stop the uh, solder resist mask. And I did wonder whether I should run the solder resist down between these gold fingers. And then I thought, no, I'll, I'll totally remove it from this section of the board. Uh, very much like this circuit board. This one incidentally was never made up because there was a, a misalignment of the key there. And you can see there's a narrow gap there and a, a wide gap there. So this board was an error board. But certainly it gave me some good ideas uh, how to produce my board. Now these fingers are of course are a lot wider. These are 3.96 millimeters where these are 0.1 inch. So that's 2.54 millimeters. But certainly yeah that gave me some pointers as to how to make this board up. Now the other thing that had to be different about this board is the coating. So this is gold plated and it's not only gold plated down here at the connector, it's also gold plated up here because you can't really have a different plating technique on one part of the board to the other. So when I ordered this board I had to select the option for ENIG and that's Electroless Nickel Immersion Gold. So from Wikipedia, electroless nickel immersion gold, ENIG, is a type of surface plating used for printed circuit board. It consists of an electroless nickel plating covered with a thin layer of immersion gold, which protects the nickel from oxidization. The electroless nickel step is an autocatalytic process that involves depositing nickel on the palladium catalyzed copper surface. So does that mean that this doesn't use um, electrolysis. It's not dipped in sort of an electrolysis type bath. That's what I'm getting from this electroless thing. So as I say on these boards I used the ENIG uh, coating process. Now that's different to boards that I've had made previously which are HASSEL and these are, what does that stand for? That's hot air solder leveling. Essentially that's just hot solder deposited onto the copper and you don't get a completely flat surface with Hassel. You get slightly raised, let's see if we can see that, slightly raised uh, surfaces and they're not completely flat. So of course it would be totally inappropriate for fingers that have to run into a connector quite apart from the fact that you've got uh, dissimilar metals which over time are going to react with each other. Now it also says here that uh, ENIG also does not wet as evenly or as easily as Hassel. So is it going to be a slightly more difficult soldering to these gold plated pads? Well I can easily find out because I've got some 3 and 4 pin JST connectors so that uh, I can have a go at soldering those in. Yeah kind of right now. Now how tight are these connectors going to be? They're not terribly tight so I will need some blue tack to hold those in while soldering. I just used the um, footprints direct from the Easy EDA libraries for these connectors. Right, let's give this a try. I'll just bring this down a bit so that you can see what I'm doing. And let's see if there are any issues with soldering these gold plated pads. Oh, there are none at all. Easy peasy, I don't know what all the fuss is about. Yeah, that's flowing absolutely lovely. They're wetting and flowing just fine. Let's just try one more. This is a three pin JST. Oh yeah, that solder's absolutely lovely. No problems with that. And these are three plated holes, of course. So the gold, I presume the gold plating runs right through the hole uh, as well as on the surface. And in close-up, that looks like that. Well, they look very lovely to me. So there's a completed uh, module with the seven connectors on it. And I've laid these out in the order that the PCBs appear on my vocoder front panel. And you can see I've put little labels on here. Uh, output, slew raid, <laughs> focus! Yes, output, slew rate, the excitation, input board. Uh, these two four pin connectors are for the LED bar graph boards because they require five volts um, as well as 12 ground and minus 12. Five volts is for the LEDs, that's for the main excitation board and this is for the speech 
input board. So that's going to be a really handy little thing. And then all I need to do is uh, connect up some probably initially wires to these, although I do intend to make a board um, that this sits down onto, uh, which I can mate my various PSU boards to, but that's going to come later. So let's put my actual PCB in the socket. Oh yes, that's rather nice, isn't it? Now, just a final note about uh, these boards and the way you make them up. The edge here, this edge along here is chamfered at 45 degrees. Uh, let's see if I can get in close on that so we can see that. It's actually uh, chamfered by a machine, presumably. Yes, we can see it there. So they chamfer that edge off and JLC PCB do recommend that you set your fingers back away from the edge of your uh, board outline by an amount that is related to the thickness of the board. Now there's a list of these things and I'll just um, get that up in a moment, but for a 1.6 millimeter board, they recommend that you bring these fingers back 1.2 millimeters. Now I think I brought them back 1.27 because it just happened to be uh, a quarter of a tenth, no, a half of a tenth of an inch so it fitted my grid. So I brought these back and that um, brought my fingers up into this area here. But I thought where the fingers come up into the solder mask area, the solder resist area, uh, I thought that looked rather pretty. So <laughs> I left them um, as this size pads. Yes, I think that does look quite pretty, but certainly you need to bring these back. And then uh, it means that the grinding machine that grinds this 45 degree chamfer on there uh, is in no danger of grinding away the edges of your copper or gold plated nickel plated copper pads. So let's start on JLC PCB's home page and I'm going to go to the quote page by clicking quote now. And then on the quote page, um, I want the surface finish to be Enig. So I click this link here. And then I want to say on the gold finger section, um, yes to the chamfered border. So I clicked that one there. And if we just look at this help thing, um, this page comes up and talks about gold fingers are the gold plated columns along the edge, uh, the connecting edge of printed circuit boards. Uh, currently you can only check Enig ROHS on our website for the option gold finger. Generally we will make a 45 degree beveled uh, edge for the finger. Now down here there's some details here where uh, D, the D, the size of the board, the thickness of the board, that's right it's here, is 1.6 millimeters. You want L which is the uh, distance over which that bevel is going to carve into the board, 1.2 millimeters. As I say I went for 1.27 uh, if you've got a two millimeter board, you want 1.5 millimeter drawback. And for anything less than a 1.6 millimeter board, you can have a one millimeter drawback. So that is my gold fingered edge connector, uh, power distribution printed circuit board, uh, which uses Enig rather than Hassel and has these uh, chamfered edges along here. Now that is a very tight fit in this connector and that's absolutely perfect for power. You want the tightest possible grip on there. But when I make up the filter boards for the vocoder, um, I am going to be wanting to sort of pull them out and put in different ones. So I'm just wondering whether for that application, I might go for a thinner PCB material so that this is a slightly looser fit in there. But for power distribution, I'm absolutely uh, happy with that firm grip so that uh, current can flow from the connector through to these sockets. So there it is, um, five, I only made five because the, uh, the gold plating is a little bit more expensive than the uh, uh, tin lead uh, solder hassle plating. Um, my latest board, which is this uh, rather nice edge connector that fits rather well into uh, these sockets. 
A lot of you said that these connectors and this 3.96 millimeter pitch is a common thing you see on Commodore computers. Well, I never had a Commodore computer, so I didn't recognize it immediately, but yes, that makes a very nice connector for power distribution for my vocoder project. So, cheerio.